What's going on, everybody? This is the Blockchain Backer, bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. Today, we'll take a peek over here at the Bitcoin price chart. We'll also talk about the stock market and the Federal Reserve interest rate hike of 75 basis points yesterday, taking a look at mortgage interest rates and are those things going to impact the cryptocurrency market? You know, yesterday we actually did have some volume show up yesterday um, right here on top of the all time high for Bitcoin. It did not quite perfectly touch the all time high. We did see some buy volume in there. We can move it to smaller time frames to see that one green candle in there. However, that green candle that happened to show up right there showed up right in the middle of the Federal Reserve announcement when Jerome Powell was speaking at the podium. So if you had this on like the one minute chart, which I was because I, whenever I'm watching these press conferences with Jerome Powell, I will have Bitcoin on the one minute chart and then I'll have the Dow Jones down here on the one minute chart and watching how these things move in absolute unison on the one minute while they're talking and while they're giving out information. So this all this action that happened in Bitcoin yesterday did occur in the middle of the press conference with Jerome Powell as the Dow Jones was moving up at the same time. So hard to say that buyers really just kind of showed up there organically and that they thought this price action was a strong buy, but that that price action occurred exactly during that meeting while he was talking along with the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And as we can see, the market has rolled back over. And in pre-market, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is down about 500 points. So it fired up several hundred points. And then into the night, it was up 300 points. And it rolled over, going down 800. So now it's, it's back at 500. So things are not looking good out there for the stock market and the behavior that's happening with it just rolling over and rolling over and rolling over. Um, and, you know, this is one of those things where I do question, you know, are we in a, a much bigger problem in the stock market than just some typical correction that we've seen. So right now, the Dow Jones is down about 18.5%, 18 and a half to 19%. Corrections that we've seen, typical corrections before, hey, they can pull down, you know, 16, 17%. And this one right back in here, this one was a good old 20, 20 percenter. So it's not beyond what we've seen. However, of course, the problems are with how high these Fibonacci extensions have gotten here on the Dow Jones and that the SPX or the S&P 500 did go on and hit a 4.236. However, the NASDAQ did not. But uh, things are looking pretty scary out there for the stock market. I'm, I'm pretty concerned that on whether or not this thing's going way deeper, especially with all the focus that is placed over there in the 10-year Treasury government bond yield and that this has been in breakout in here. So it's the highest it's been since back in 2011. And if we look over here at mortgage interest rates, because the 10-year dictates what the mortgage rates are going to be, we can just look right back here through history and we can look and see how quickly this has happened. So if we look at back in 2021, the mortgage interest rates were right there under 3%. So the average mortgage interest rate in 2021 was 2.96%. And if we look at 2022, we could see how rapidly these rates are growing. And if we were going to put in June's number right now, it'd be about 6.3. So if you listen to the press conference, they said they're going to continue to raise interest rates, probably 75 again at the next meeting, and that they're going to significantly reduce their balance sheet, continue doing that. And that what we know last time is in 2018, when the 10 year yield was right here, right at about 3.1% in this area. This is when the, ped, the Fed did pivot and they changed their mind and they made it very clear they're not going to be changing their mind. And while prices were positive after that meeting yesterday, a lot of times those initial reactions end up being the opposite reactions. And today, now that the stock market is open, the Dow Jones is down 770 points. So this is all looking real bad out there for the stock market. We know that translates into crypto throughout history and what we've seen. And the big question is, have we seen the actual pop of the stock market? You guys know me, I love Fibonacci extension levels. I see how high this Fibonacci extension level has reached. We know the NASDAQ has not quite gotten up to a full 4.236 extension, but certainly crossed the 3.618 and that the S&P 500 was able to cross above it and that the Fed did sell out or have it for ethical reasons had to sell all their stocks right on the day that it hit the 4.236 extension. So I am of the concern of what's going on here with the stock market and that translating into the rest of the cryptocurrency market. For XRP, one of the lines in the sand was breaking below trend, the two-year trend. You could see even that pop yesterday. That was really just kind of a back test of the trend. So I don't have a target on how low XRP could go, especially if the stock market is going to completely crumble on itself, which I don't know, but boy, it's sure looking like it. 
and that it's like, oh, hey, look, there was quite a bit of buy volume that showed up for Bitcoin here. That's that's pretty good, right? We went down and like barely touched that all time high. Look how much buy volume came in right in there. That's good. It's not as much as the, the chaotic volume. We know there's still all that liquidation stuff out there. Who's going to float up in the water from who are casualties from with Luna and UST? What are the repercussions that are going on with Celsius right now? There's lots of funds that are in liquidation situations right now. It is a trying time out there right now. And while it did have that volume right there on that, that was totally just during the, the press conference. That was not buyers just organically stepping in at the price that was happening during that press conference. But, you know, we do know that Bitcoin's back at the 200 week moving average. It is below it currently. There are still, including today, four more days until it closes. It closes in about three days and 11 hours at this point. It needs to close above 22,400 in order to maintain that. You can see that total two is over here. It's still holding that level from its previous all time high, and the 200 week is still there as well. And we can see where we are as well over here for total three, the altcoin market excluding Ethereum. It's right back there at its all time high from 2018. So we've got really kind of that same consistent message throughout the whole market right now. You've got total two, total three, and Bitcoin back at the 2018 all time highs. However, as expected, you know, once Ethereum started taking out its level, it wasn't expected that that all time high would be any type of support for it. So so definitely a trying time, just nearly straight line down with no sign of relief happening in here yet. As you guys probably know, if you're on Twitter over there, Crypto Whale, one of the biggest bears out there. I felt like it was only me and him screaming about Bitcoin back in late of 2021. But surprise, surprise, he's come out feeling pretty bullish right now, even saying he bought some Bitcoin. So I wish I had that confidence right here. I mean, those things make logical sense being back at the all time high and being at that 200 week moving average. But with the stock market heading down, 10 year yields and breakout, XRP really just back testing the trend. And that this thing has just happened in such a straight line with just like cascading things, Luna, Terra, then who's the next one? Then you got Celsius, right? Now who's the next one? Is there a next one, right? So I'm definitely acting more like a spectator right now. I'm not buying anything. I'm just kind of sitting on my hands. And I just think, you know, structurally of how this is all playing out, it's got, you know, it's got me more worried than usual, more worried than any type of real correction of what's been happening here, specifically because of the fact that we just keep getting these breaks. And you know me for narratives, I'm, I'm not really huge on narratives, but the Luna and Terra stuff, that's not a narrative, like that happened. And then that does cause issues. And then we see more issues and more issues. And so I'm not sure what would need to happen in order for prices to like reverse really hard here. And the reality is we didn't see huge buying show up in here on this all time high. And I, I part of me questions if that's just a, a trickster candle due to the majority of it coming in one hour. And that majority that happened right in there wasn't on the bottom, right? So it wasn't a ton of like buy volume down here at the bottom, but it came in the middle of Jerome Powell's press conference. So, you know, this is like press conference stuff. We saw that in the stock market too. And then the stock market rolled over really quick. So I don't know. We're, I mean, we're at interesting price levels for sure. We're back at the all time high for Bitcoin, the altcoin market, total two and total three. But I know this was one of the things, one of the lines in the sand for me was with XRP right here. And that that was just really backtesting broken two year trend. So I get it. We're at, you know, important levels here. We're at the all time high from 2018. We're also right there near that 200 week moving average on Bitcoin. And we're at it. We're still above it over there on total two and on total three. But the element happening here is that stock market is moving down quickly and we haven't seen any type of reversal of volume come in. And like I've been pointing to, I've never seen a bubble, the bubbles that I've studied in here where after you have this, right? So you have your double tap, bull flag, breakout, back test, violent back test, V bottom. I haven't seen one before where we come back down below here and that the bubble hasn't been popped. Let alone even getting down this far is more than I've seen in other examples as well. And it's looking more and more likely like it's gonna cross there, or at least it's gonna get there. And even in that circumstance, I haven't seen it where it gets back there and it hasn't popped. So. There's legitimate concerns here that the stock market has also popped. And so the Dow Jones, it's only 374 points from getting to that level to where it's like, uh, every time I've seen this, the bubble has popped. So that's what does have me con concerned over there for the stock market. What has been interesting though, is that even through all of this, the Euro has still been able to maintain that low that it set back there in, middle, in the middle of May, even with the DXY setting a new high in here. And this is a 20 year, 21 year 
fall and roll back up for the DXY now approaching back to its 702 retracement in here. Um, in that even with the DXY setting these new highs, the euro has still maintained these lows somehow. And we, we've looked at that before. So who comes up being the winner? Like, you know, if, if the euro ends up bouncing and the DXY ends up falling and then the stock market keeps falling, right? It's kind of like, well, who, who ends up being the winner there? Because DXY falling, euro rising, that's typically good for cryptocurrency, but also stock market rising is good for crypto and stock market falling is bad for crypto. So you have kind of like mixed bag in there. Uh, but the picture comes a whole lot more clear if the euro just takes that out. If the euro just takes out that low, then up, oh, okay, there you go. All, all of them are there, but it still somehow has been able to hold that low. And here we go, checking in on the Dow again. It's now down 800 points. So yikes for the stock market. So the thing about Bitcoin's move back down to this all-time high, it's a pretty clean structure. You see one, two, three, four, five rolls back up and hits, you know, wave seven and down there rolls back up. Um, typically these are okay, but we need to see like if there's volume coming in in here and people are actually ended up buying Bitcoin here on the support level. There's more volume than usual down here, but not exceptional, insane volumes, right? And again, that, that candle that came in there during Jerome Powell's press conference was a, a pretty doozy one in there on the daily time frame, 15 minute, four hour, one hour, all over the place. That candle really makes itself apparent, but we need more than that. So for me to start getting a little bit more optimistic, I, you know, a lot of things need to happen right now. All things are looking pretty rough. The, the hardest part about a lot of it is you can see where we're are where we are right i mean that's a a big moment for bitcoin and a big moment for the altcoin market i'd love to come on here and be positive and say hey look you know we're on top of the all-time high this is a great thing right historically that's what you want to see that's what we want and look back to 2014 15 16 17 hey what was this right all-time high big old Big old hit back on the all-time high. And then what happened? Rampaging altcoin market after backtesting the all-time high in there, right? So, hey, is it unusual to backtest the all-time high after taking you know, four years? No. I mean, that, that's what happens. And then we saw this thing just go absolutely insane. So unusual for Bitcoin to come back and hit the all-time high? No, not unusual. But we've gone through so much of it of how much we follow this stock market. And this stock market is not showing signs of uh, ready to turn up and go on a rampage run just of yet. And so... We'll kind of see what happens here in the coming days. Today is Thursday, so tomorrow will be Friday. We'll see if we end up taking that level out by tomorrow or if Bitcoin can bring in some high buy volume. But it's a conflicting time. I'd love to come on here and be hardcore one way or hardcore the other way. The, the reality is there's so many negative elements out there, whether that's USDT not being pegged to a dollar, whether that's Terra Luna fallout, whether that's Celsius fallout whether that's hedge funds getting knocked out or big whales getting liquidated, DeFi. I mean, you could just build this huge case of all the negative elements in the market. And then, you know, not only that, but chart issues too, right? With a higher DXY, trend breaks on Bitcoin, trend breaks on XRP. There's a lot of negative things. So if we want to see positive things, through, it's just going to have to show itself in the market because right now it's not showing it. The only thing that we do know at this point right now is that it's at interesting levels. So it's at an interesting level of being at the all-time high. It's at an interesting level of the 200-week moving average being in this vicinity. And what we have seen before is we have seen wicks that can go below the 200-week moving average. So merely poking its head below it isn't that big of a deal. The big question is what happens when the week closes in three days and now nine hours. Those are all interesting price levels still. And then it mixed at the same time, look how oversold it is. It's massively oversold over here for Bitcoin and for the cryptocurrency market in general. A lot of these altcoins are more oversold than they have ever been oversold in history. So massively oversold at interesting price levels. Those are all positive things. But the reversal things, like the, the art of speculating for a reversal to come in is to try to look for the elements to actually show up. And right now, they just haven't really made themselves apparent yet. And that if this was organic, it would be like, hey, sweet. Okay, cool. Buyers did show up that they also showed up at the same time in the stock market and the stock market is now down 800 points. So <laughs> yeah, surprisingly though, Bitcoin has held and the stock market has rolled over big time. So somehow, you know, even though we're red today, like if you didn't notice when we closed the day yesterday, we actually closed pretty green. The market closed real green. So late afternoon rally, kind of the market was red all day and then late afternoon rally and it closed green and then now it's back to being red. But hey, it's still holding. 
really want to see reversal volume come in here before I can get optimistic. Otherwise, like looking at to other signals in the market, like XRP, that looks like that was just a trend back test. So definitely nothing in the clear and the stock market looking more and more likely like this thing may have popped. But I've actually always been real friendly with crypto whale. I know either you hate them or you love them. Um, I've always gotten along real well with them because we actually saw eye to eye on what we thought was up with Bitcoin back in 2021. And he, he might see something different that I don't see in here. But for him to buy Bitcoin, I think that says something. But I don't see it outside of being on the all time high and the 200 week moving average, which historically are great things and being massively oversold. I just have so many other worries in the market. I'm cheering for him. I hope he's right because these markets have been just down only for so long. We're at 11 weeks straight in the altcoin market. Unprecedented. Never seen it before in history. We're definitely we've been primed for a relief rally for quite some time. Hopefully it does come in soon. So. All right, guys, that's it. Man, it's been a wild week. This has just been go, go, go since last week. Um, making videos through the weekend once we started seeing those lines in the sand get broken. And then, you know, two videos each day this week. It will only be one video today. Um, and it'll be one video tomorrow. And I will be taking the weekend off. It is Father's Day weekend coming up this weekend. We do have plans for Father's Day weekend. So if, if, if it hits the fan out there, I still won't be able to make videos because we do have plans for Father's Day. But of course, I will be back on Monday. And I will see you guys tomorrow. So if anything happens between today and tomorrow, I'll catch you guys tomorrow here on YouTube. But all eyes are over there on the stock market right now. See what happens there. And to see if the altcoin market and Bitcoin are going to hold this all-time high that it's at right now. It's the most oversold it's been in history on the weekly time frame for the altcoin market and for lots of altcoins. We'll see if Bitcoin can hold it here. Otherwise, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you could, please like this video and give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you could be notified of when I create new content and when I go live. As always, this is not investment advice and I am not a financial advisor, but if you ever need a pick me up or a little bit of reassurance, just remember that the blockchain backers got your back. Have a good one.